Here comes the moon train. We are officially back in a space race, perhaps particularly due to a new red scare. But now, it's not so much the Ruskies we're worried about. China has launched an unprecedented mission. To... It's one of China's most ambitious space missions yet. Since 2018, China has launched more rockets into orbit than any other country. Thanks to the Chinese and their rapid ascendance into space, politicians are once again well motivated to keep NASA and the space program funded. And with those funds and global inspiration yielded from recent strides made by the likes of commercial pioneer SpaceX, there are a lot of plans for the moon and beyond. Let's take a look at some today. Back in March 2024, Interloon revealed itself to the world. It would be a company that focused on extracting natural resources in space, aka space mining. Its goal is to become the pioneer private company in commercializing space resource extraction, catering to both commercial and government clientele. Interloon was founded by Rob Meyerson and Gary Lay, who both work at Jeff Bezos Blue Origin. They are joined by Harrison Smith, an Apollo 17 astronaut who became the second to last person to ever walk on the moon all the way back in 1972 as executive chairman. The team also includes Indra Hornsby from Rocket Lab and Black Sky and James Antifay from Alphabet and Maxar. With their combined expertise and drive, the company intends to be the first to collect, return, and then sell lunar resources. Interloon will initially focus on extracting and transporting lunar helium-3. Helium-3 has one less neutron than standard helium, aka helium-4, and it's kinda this magic substance because we know of a way to make near-zero radioactive nuclear energy by fusing it with deuterium. This would be a game changer for humanity. The only problem? Helium-3 is nearly non-existent on Earth, pretty much only being able to be collected in very trace amounts after a radioactive isotope of hydrogen called tritium decays enough. But on the moon? It's nearly everywhere, basically due to the moon getting directly bombarded by solar winds for billions of years without the protection of a magnetic field. So needless to say, investors are definitely interested in getting helium-3 on Earth. But this will be no easy task. Interloon will have to successfully develop or perhaps collaborate with others to deploy as of yet developed technologies to not only gather helium-3, but to transport it back to Earth. Not to mention, if recent moon landing attempts are any indicator, it turns out it's really hard to even just get to the moon. Chandrayaan-2, Hakutu-R Mission 1, Luna 25, Peregrine Mission 1, all of these fail to successfully get to the moon. Despite all this, Interloon remains optimistic and is hoping to send a Prospector rover to the moon in 2026. If successful, they aim to then conduct a demonstration mission in 2028, actually extracting helium-3 from the lunar soil and even bringing back a small sample. By 2030, the company aims to scale up its operation by extracting other resources like industrial metals and water in addition to the helium-3. But again, these are currently just aspirations. Subscribe to this channel to get more video updates on this and more lunar topics. Now, remember how we said we're basically in a new Red Scare era? Well, that's pretty evident since the DoD is tasking its infamous R&D arm, DARPA, on paving a way to set up a fully functional manned presence on the moon. As such, DARPA initiated the Lunar Architecture Capability Study and selected 14 companies to participate. The study is meant to be open for seven months and will not fund any construction or hardware development, but is instead designed to identify the technologies that are needed and foundational to a developing permanent lunar infrastructure. Northrop Grunman was one of the 14 companies and one of their tasks is to detail concepts that would support a future lunar economy, including the development of lunar railroad. So let's clear things up. NASA, nor the US government, is not currently funding a lunar railroad. Rather, Northrop Grunman is putting together a report for DARPA of feasibility, cost, and what it would require doing and bringing if we did decide we needed a lunar rail network. The report will also analyze logistical and huge temperature fluctuation risks and potential concepts in addition to maintenance requirements and the possible integration of robots. 
Regarding constructing the project, the report will try to see how lunar materials could be used as building materials. It'll certainly be interesting to see what the DARPA report yields and whether NASA or anybody else decides to go through with some of these ideas. But no matter what, humanity's return to the moon is already well underway. NASA's Artemis program aims for astronauts to walk once again on the surface of the moon, a feat which hasn't been done in more than 50 years. This will take place on Artemis 3, a mission currently scheduled for 2025, but could likely be pushed back a bit. Artemis 1, the mission to circumnavigate the moon, has already successfully taken place, and Artemis 2 is scheduled to launch this year, pending no delays. In addition, there's already an Artemis 4, an Artemis 5, and Artemis 6 mission approved and being prepared for, with more after that currently on the drawing board. Sustaining a human presence on the moon is the ultimate goal. If you want to make sure to not miss out on these missions and their updates, be sure to subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.